Hello and welcome to Worship from Money Feath Parish Church. It is the 21st of March and it is our fifth Sunday in Lent. Before we go into our service of worship, however, I'm going to cut you to a different video that explains how we are going to open up worship in different ways in the coming weeks and months. This is an update on how we are going to worship as a congregation in Moneyfeath Parish Church in the coming weeks and months after the Kirk Session met in mid-March to consider all the various variables that are in play at the moment. The decision was that we would not return to the building to worship uh, ahead of the 10th of May. That might seem a little bit away, but there's various reasons for picking um, that date. When we do go back, how we go back is partly dependent on you and partly depending on what the um, recommendations are coming from government and the Church of Scotland. So between now and the 10th of May, I would really appreciate it if you could contact your elder or indeed myself or Scott um, to let us know what your thoughts are, bearing in mind that when we go back into the building, the same restrictions are likely to be in place as were um, before Christmas. So two metre distancing, wearing of face coverings, no singing, no gathering. I might have to wield my big two metre stick, all those kind of things. So it would be really useful to hear um, your thoughts on that. Between now and then, um, there's a little bit of a progression of how we're going to do worship. Uh, for the end of March, for Palm Sunday, um, the services will remain pre-recorded and available on YouTube. During Holy Week, which is Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, they are going to be streamed live through YouTube and be available thereafter in the same way as we did for Ash Wednesday. And then from Easter Sunday morning, from 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning, for the Sundays through April, we're going to trial um, coming together live via Zoom. And you don't actually have to have a computer and internet connection to do that. You can join us on the phone, but your elder again will have those details that you need to join us or again, contact myself and Scott. We are trying slightly different ways of doing things. One, um, to enable worship in a collective way, but also just thinking about what's going to come up in, in the coming months as well. So, um, Holy Week is live. Come Easter Sunday, we're going on Zoom and then we'll look to go back into our buildings sometime after the 10th of May. Speak to your elder, speak to us and let's see what the future looks like. Thank you. This past week has seen a very different St Patrick's Day in Ireland and across the world. But a very famous part of St Patrick's most famous prayer really echoes for me in today's service. So we begin our worship by hearing these words. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eyes that see me, Christ in the ear that hears me. Christ is with us, let us worship God. Jubilati, everybody. Jubilati, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways and Come before his presence singing, enter now his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is gracious, and his mercy everlasting. Jubilati, jubilati, jubilati Deo. Jubilati, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways and Come before his presence singing, 
and turn all his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is gracious, and his mercy everlasting. Jubilati, jubilati, jubilati Deo. Jubilati, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways, and come before his presence singing, enter now his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is gracious, and his mercy everlasting. Jubilati, jubilati, jubilati Deo. Hey! Let us pray. Eternal, all-loving God, we awake today to creation's colour, to nature's voice, the tenacious power of greening and growth. We awake to the faces and conversations of friends and strangers, stories familiar and places unknown. And we praise the signs of your presence all around us. Throughout time and history, gracious God, you reveal yourself to us in events, places and people. You transform the seemingly dull and mundane making all things holy, changing our lives forever. And in Jesus, you give us the ultimate embodiment of your ending love for us. For his birth, his living, his death and his resurrection are all landmarks in our faith, waypoints on our journey ever closer to you. Forgive us our lack of attention, merciful God, our tendency to look the other way or to get diverted by the unimportant. Desire to take a different path from the one you are nudging us towards. You renew us this and every day, in body, mind and spirit, so that every time we meet you, in our homes, in worship or in the streets, in encounters or experiences both planned and unpredictable, among familiar or unexpected people, Whenever or wherever we meet you, ever-present God, may it bring us closer to your heart and reveal a little more of your desire for our lives as we follow Jesus on to Jerusalem and all that that entails with faith, hope and love in our lives. Amen. Jesus is journeying ever closer to Jerusalem. In today's stories, we don't have parables, but we have interactions between Jesus and the disciples, Jesus and a blind man, and Jesus and Zacchaeus. In many ways, these are the embodiment of the parable we heard last week. In some ways, I just want to direct you back to last week's sermon and the video that I shared of social justice in a brave new world. If you haven't seen that already, please do give it a watch. But Jesus is getting closer to Jerusalem. This is the penultimate Sunday of Lent and he is in the city, the crossroads place of Jericho, less than 20 miles from Jerusalem. And this is what happens as he approaches his own sacrificial death. Today's Bible reading is Luke chapter 18 at verse 31 to Luke chapter 19 at verse 10. Jesus took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, Listen, 
We are going to Jerusalem, where everything the prophets wrote about the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Gentiles who will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will whip him and kill him, but three days later he will rise to life. But the disciples did not understand any of these things. The meaning of the words was hidden from them, and they did not know what Jesus was talking about. As Jesus was coming near Jericho, there was a blind man sitting by the road, begging. When he heard the crowd passing by, he asked, What is this? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, they told him. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, take pity on me. The people in front scolded him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, take pity on me. So Jesus stopped and ordered the blind man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Sir, he answered, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Then see, your faith has made you well. At once he was able to see, and he followed Jesus, giving thanks to God. When the crowd saw it, they all praised God. Jesus went on into Jericho and was passing through. There was a chief tax collector there named Zacchaeus, who was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was a little man and could not see Jesus because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, who was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy. All the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I will give half my belongings to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house today, for this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. Thanks be to God.
A story of two men who lived long ago in a faraway city of Jericho. One man did a job that made everyone fear him, so they called him a baddie and never went near him. The other had no job because he was blind, so he sat for hours every day begging at the roadside. When Jesus came visiting their city one day, the neighbours said, you two had better stay away. A blind man and a bad man Jesus won't want to meet. So bad man and blind man keep out of our streets. But when Jesus was visiting their city that day, the blind man and the bad man had something to say. So I might be a beggar and I might be blind, but I can see that Jesus is kind. And I might do a job I'm hated for, but I can see Jesus knows me better. Jesus could see that the blind man was brave and to Zacchaeus, Jesus hailed and gave a wave. He welcomed them both and he made them his friends, seeing not blindness nor badness, but two God-beloved men. Let us pray. Holy God, we, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and our hearts to love as you do. Amen. Over the last few months, I have um, taken quite a lot of time to listen to and read and explore the work of American Franciscan Richard Rohr. Father Richard is a Roman Catholic priest and a Franciscan friar, and he's dedicated his life to sharing the gospel, both in teaching, in prayer and activism. For him, the story of Zacchaeus is a paradigm in the great themes of Jesus, which are, he says, forgiveness and inclusion. He wants to push against the idea that we hold on to resentment and we exclude people who are somehow different from us and more than exclude, quite often scapegoat. But having listened to and engaged with Father Richard's work over the last few months, I actually think his broader work says we need a step before that. Before we get to forgiveness and inclusion, we, need a change of heart. We need our eyes and our ears to allow us to see the divine image in everyone. He uses a phrase that says we start with yes. Quite often in our society we start with no. We exclude people on the basis of what they look like, what they're wearing, where we meet them, what time we meet them, what colour their skin is, what colour their hair is. We're invited to start instead with yes. And to start with yes requires a change in our own hearts. That doesn't mean to say that we don't go on to then put in any boundaries that are required. That's not to say that we do not allow consequences and the needs of justice to unfold. And it certainly doesn't mean to say that we don't protect the most vulnerable in society but yet we are called to start with yes to start with an openness 
And this is not a one moment fix. This is a daily conversion, a daily transformation that we need to seek and we need to pray for. Because as human beings, we are wired biologically, by the way we grow up, by our society and our culture, to say no, to, to protect ourselves, to put our hands out in fear. But we're asked to do something different by the God who says yes and the Jesus who forgives and includes. And that is tough work. It is really tricky to start with yes to people who have hurt us or people who remind us of someone who has hurt us. That in itself is hard enough. But it's even more tricky if we're not aware of us saying no in the first place. We are so often blinkered by our own biases, our own prejudices, and our own communal scapegoating and being able to see them, whether that's by having our eyes open or whether that's by climbing a tree or whether that's by having a conversation with someone different from us, we need to do that work. Three years ago, just after I arrived here in Money Feath, Scott and I were invited to the St. Patrick's Day party down in St. Bride's. <laughs> Caris wasn't invited, that is why she's upset by that. But Scott and I went off down to St Bride's and um, it was a very, uh, we were very welcomed um, and we had a good evening. But at one point in the evening I noticed my blood starting to go a little bit cold and my hackles rising. And it was as we were walking away from St Bride's that I realised what it was. It was the point when everybody started singing traditional Irish songs. For me, growing up in the West Coast and then living in Glasgow, those songs were often, if not always, sung with a background of aggression and as a prelude to violence. I'd never heard those songs sung in the way they were sung in St Bride's that night. To me, they were a trigger, a warning sign for something less pleasant to come. I don't think of myself as a sectarian person. I've shared with a number of you a number of times how much it fills my soul that I was able to receive mass from Roman Catholic priests during my time in the Navy and that sense of ecumenism and interfaith really shapes me in my faith. And yet, and yet at some deep part, the sectarian environment in which I was brought up still lurked. Some of our prejudices and biases we know, and others we don't. There's a sense of us forgiving what we don't know we know. And there's a sense of including even that which hurts. But let's go to the step before that. If we are the person who has been excluded by society, can we have the faith and the courage to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If we the person who is shoved to the back, ignored and stamped upon, have we got the courage to lift our head above the parapet to catch a glimpse of who this Jesus might be? And can we see in ourselves someone who is seen deeply by Jesus, warts and all? And in that seeing, and a yes said to us, allow our own hearts to be transformed so we might say yes to someone else. Glory be to God the Father, 
God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This week's intimations are reiterations of previous ones, but I share them with you anyway. We had a video at the start about worship. Right at the very end of this service, we're going to tag on the information video about um, books, etc., available on the man's doorstep. Have a look and see what's available. Our next virtual coffee morning uh, via Zoom 
is next Saturday, which is the 27th of March at half past 10. If you've not been before, you are most welcome to join us. Just get in touch with me and I'll pass on the details for that. Tuesday the 23rd of March marks a year since the initial lockdown of the United Kingdom for COVID-19. We're being asked to light candles to remember the lives lost and the families who grieve. The invitation from um, across the Church of Scotland is to light a candle at 7pm and then contrary to what I shared before, I'm not going to offer a service at 7pm because people I know who are even more creative than I am are offering a service via Zoom at 8pm. Um, details of that are on our Facebook page if you're on Facebook. If you're not, I'm going to send in the link to the elders or be in touch with us um, and join Lindsay Kimmett, who's Andrew's wife, and Dan and Phillips for what I'm sure will be a very moving service at 8pm. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to everyone who has enabled worship to happen in this past year of lockdown, um, but also other services within the church. Big shout out in particular um, to the Quarantinis um, and their weekly making of music. They have just been outstanding and alongside them is the Pandemic Pianist who makes a return this week and our lockdown lyricist. Thank you to everyone who has taken part in that in some way, shape or form. Thank you. Looking ahead to um, Easter weekend and Easter week, uh, a reminder that MAD and the church are having an Easter quiz trail around Monifith that starts from about noon on Friday the 2nd and runs for a week. So keep your eye out for that and mark it in the diary. And I'm wondering for our services looking slightly different via Zoom throughout April and the season of Easter, it would be really lovely to hear some of your favourite hymns and perhaps we could incorporate for just now we bring our prayers for the world and for the work of the church before God. God of transforming love we give thanks that you know who we are that you see the deepest parts of us our hearts and triumphs our hopes and dreams you see us fully who we really are and you call us by name beloved there is no greater gift we can receive. And so we seek to respond in our love for you, the service of our life, the sharing of our blessings and our love for others. Help us at all times to draw from the well of your grace a never ending source of mercy and hope which sustains us and transforms the world. God of outcast and stranger, we pray mercy upon all whom we and society ostracise, most often for reasons unfounded, such as gender or ethnicity, religion, age or ability, country of birth, or indeed an assumed country of birth. We pray for mercy wherever there is oppression or injustice, neglect, poverty or ableism. Help each of us to see each person as a fellow human being, equally created in your divine image, so we may start with an openness that can lead to new possibilities for us, for them, for all of society. Healing God, we give thanks for all who have worked tirelessly this past year, caring for people, seeking to make them well. So much has been asked of medical staff and carers and we realise they are close to burnout. May those who care for others be cared for. May those who listen to others be listened to. May those who give life to others know fullness of life themselves. We pray for all who have died during this time of pandemic, of coronavirus and other causes. We pray they knew they were not alone in their final hours and that, we, and that they are now at peace in your eternal light. We pray for all who grieve the death of loved ones, particularly when it was difficult to say goodbye 
or when bereavement was even lonelier than normal. Healing God, have mercy on us all, on every country of our global home, that compassion might be known and hope shared as lives are saved and a human immunity builds. All seeing God, even amidst the current pandemic, pain still abounds in our world and community. Suffering, fear and violence, it seems, are not stopped by a virus. So we call to mind parts of our world facing difficulties just now. Places like Syria, South Sudan, Israel and Palestine, Brazil, Atlanta, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Uyghurs and China, Iceland and New South Wales. Lord, have mercy upon them. We call to mind friends, families and all who have asked for our prayers. And offer, particularly in your presence, Kinsley and her family. Lord, have mercy upon all whom we remember. It is our privilege, dear Lord, to bring our heartaches and heart's desires before you in prayer. And we give thanks that you know this better than we do ourselves. So hear us as we join with all the saints in heaven and on earth in the prayer taught by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. church is wherever God's people are praising, knowing they're wanted and loved by their Lord. The church is wherever Christ's followers are trying to live and to share out the good news of God. The church is wherever God's people are loving, where all are forgiven and sight once again, where all are accepted, whatever their background, whatever their past, and whatever their pain. The church is wherever God's people are seeking to reach out and touch folk wherever they are, conveying the gospel its joy and its comfort to challenge, refresh, and excite and inspire. The church is wherever God's people are praising, knowing we're wanted and loved by our Lord. The church is where we as Christ's followers are trying to live and to share out the good news of God. Christ is with you, before you, behind you, beneath you, above you. Christ is on your right and on your left, encircling you always. May you journey this week, knowing this constant presence. And may the blessing of our holy God, creating, healing and transforming us all, rest upon you and all those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Hi there, I'm Fiona Reynolds and I'm the minister for Money Faith Parish Church and I live at 8 Church Street here in Money Faith and I want to just introduce you or share with you if you haven't seen it before our little um, library of items on our doorstep here in 8 Church Street. So this is 
for anyone to come and use as they want. Erwin, you arrive here. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is use some hand sanitizer um, just to try and keep everybody safe. In these top boxes, we have sanitary products for anyone who is in need of a tampons or towels. And we also have some items for uh, teenagers. And this little box, these are free to take. If you need these, free to take. In this box, there's also some items free to take um, of a slightly more spiritual nature, if this is uh, your thing. We have little pocket prayer quilts that have been made with wee crosses in them that you keep in your pocket or little postcards with a blessing on them. Again, free for you to take for yourself or to share with your nearest and dearest. With anything you take, we will have a little supply of um, plastic bags here for you to take with you as you need them. So these are both free for you to take and share as you need. The other two things are books and jigsaws. We're operating a little bit like a library. so. If you have a book or a jigsaw you want to come and swap, you can do that. If you don't, by all means, just come, have a rummage, take a book when you're finished, bring it back, and same with the jigsaw. So we have a few books or um, boxes of books here. Um, I'm afraid the good folk of Moneyfeath Parish Church seem to have a bit of a thirst for crime and thrillers, so that's the majority, but there's some other stuff there as well. Um, and plenty of jigsaws in here over on this side, in this box, oops, and in here. So please, as you wish, as you're able, as you would like, come, have a look, take what you would like, return your books or jigsaws when finished, and use your hand sanitizer at the start and end. Thank you very much, and we hope to have a dog perhaps woof at you at some point in the near future. Take care. God bless.